we can easily criticize short form spiritual content on platforms like YouTube and Instagram using phrases like sermonettes make Christianettes. Now, this seems like wisdom, but I just want to challenge and push back on that because it makes the assumption that sermons make Christians. I would absolutely agree that if someone's entire spiritual diet is made up of those little snippets of sermons that big churches post on their social media accounts, if your whole spiritual diet is made up of these little snippets, you're going to be severely spiritually malnourished in your walk with Jesus, having a very, very shallow understanding of the truth of Scripture and what it means to be a disciple and a follower of Jesus. However, to assume that sitting in church week after week, digesting and taking in a ton of content, to assume that that is what makes a faith-filled and faithful follower of Jesus, I think is also mistaken. I think many of us may need to relook at how we speak, see the spiritual development of, of ourselves, but also those in our churches, and, and see it more than just being what kind of content they digest on a Sunday morning or an afternoon on YouTube. In the context of our spiritual diet, I would love to suggest that the way that we digest content needs to be more than just a weekly feast where we take in a ton of information, a ton of inspiration, a ton of truth and digest it across the week, but also to include what you might call a spiritual snack, something that is more regular, short form, smaller bites that is still true, that is still faithful to the word of God, but that fits between those larger spiritual meals that we call church or Bible study. Now, absolutely, if you only snack, if you only take in small snippets at a time, that is going to create a huge, huge amount of problems. But just feasting and gorging ourselves once a week may not be ideal either. Now, if we stretch the illustration another step further, our diet isn't the only factor. In fact, exercise is super critical and super essential for our spiritual development. Spiritual exercise is simply putting into practice what we learn. Now, this is so critical and so, so important. And all you have to do is read the book of James to understand how essential this is. But putting into practice what we learn is like exercising. It strengthens us rather than just having knowledge and information hanging off of us. We are fit and lean and able to perform and to live out what we live every day. And we're ready for the challenges of life. Now, to step away from the food exercise analogy, I wanted to talk about something that I believe is super, super important. And it's this idea of abiding. And abiding is, is, is this connectedness with Jesus. Over the last hundreds and hundreds of years, the church has focused in on those first two areas. What we know and, and what we do. What we believe and how we live. And those two things are obviously super essential. But if that is all that Christianity is... I'm not surprised why people are disillusioned with the church. And I'm not talking about disillusioned with truth, but with how we as Christians portray faith in Jesus. If it's all just about believe the right thing and be a good person, no wonder people fall apart. Now, this is where this element of abiding comes in. Jesus taught extensively on this idea of abiding or this connectedness with himself. It is this relational nature of the believer. Using images like the grapevine, where he is the vine and we are the branches in John 15, this abiding, this connectedness with himself as the source of our life is so, so central to the life of a believer. This video, which actually is kind of like a spiritual snack, is never going to do justice to the entirety of the con this concept of connectedness or abiding with Jesus. But I just wanted to uh, talk about and reinforce the idea of the development of the believer hinging on the dependency on the life of Jesus. As we abide in Jesus and stay connected to him as our life source, his very life then transfers into us and tr changes our soul and changes our very being. And that is so critical to our spiritual development. Rather than just 
knowing the right things or believing the right things and doing the good things as as good people. But we as followers of Jesus need to be available to the very life and person of Christ. When you consider your spiritual development and the spiritual development of those around you and in your churches and Bible studies, I would love for you to consider the, this idea of feasting and snacking and exercising what we learn in our day-to-day lives. And also what I would suggest is the greatest factor, which is a personal connection to the life of Jesus as he lives in and through you, like the relationship between the branch and the vine. So let's stay connected with him.